Well, the vice president of the United States was taking notes. Donald Trump always hated seeing people take notes in the White House when he was speaking. But taking notes was the least of Donald Trump's problems with Mike Pence during a meeting in which the president of the United States was trying to get the vice president of the United States to join what Jack Smith calls a criminal conspiracy and commit a crime against the United States of America, a crime that Special Prosecutor Jack Smith in a 165-page motion today calls a conspiracy against the rights of millions of Americans to vote and have their votes counted. It was January 4th, 2021. The discussion was one of several described in Jack Smith's filing today in which Donald Trump tried to get Mike Pence to throw out the Electoral College results of the votes cast by every voter in America. This is about every vote cast in that election. Throwing out the results of seven states would mean not just that the votes in those states didn't matter, but that no votes in any states mattered in deciding who the next president would be. It meant that your vote would not matter, no matter where you cast your vote. It was a meeting about whether Mike Pence had the constitutional authority to just throw out electoral college votes on January 6th when they are officially accepted by Congress. It was a legal discussion, but no one from the White House Counsel's Office was present, not invited by Donald Trump. The lawyer arguing for Donald Trump in that meeting was the now indicted John Eastman, who is facing criminal charges in Georgia and Arizona for his alleged crimes of election interference in those states. In Jack Smith's filing today, John Eastman is referred to as co-conspirator two. And Donald Trump is referred to as the defendant. During the meeting, the defendant asked co-conspirator two to explain his plan to Pence. Co-conspirator two presented two options. Pence could unilaterally decide objections to electors or, alternatively, in the plan that co-conspirator two had devised the prior day, Pence could send the elector states to the targeted states, legislatures to determine which electors' votes should be counted. In the defendant's presence, in response to Pence's questioning, co-conspirator two admitted that the Electoral Count Act forbade what he proposed, and that no one had tested co-conspirator two's new plan to send elector states to none the, to, to back to the states. Nonetheless, the defendant repeatedly expressed a preference that state legislatures for have state legislatures do the review. Pence unilaterally rejected the valid would re, unilaterally reject valid elector states. Throughout the meeting, the defendant repeated his knowingly false fraud claims as a purported basis for Pence to act illegally. Pence's five pages of contemporaneous notes from the meeting reflect that. The defendant said, when there's fraud, the rules get changed. Bottom line, won every state by hundreds of thousands of votes. This whole thing is up to Mike Pence. Has to do with you, you can be bold. And right to do whatever you want to do. The meeting concluded with Pence, firm and clear, telling the defendant, I'm not seeing this argument working. Nonetheless, the defendant requested that Pence's staff meet with co-conspirator two again to discuss further, and Pence agreed. The next day, January 5th, there was a rerun of the same discussion. During the meeting, the defendant once again told Pence, I think you have the power to decertify. When Pence was unmoved, the defendant threatened to criticize him publicly. I'm going to have to say you did a great disservice. That provoked Pence's staff to alert the vice president's Secret Service detail that Donald Trump was going to publicly attack Mike Pence. Donald Trump followed that meeting with a couple of phone calls to Mike Pence saying, you've got to be tough tomorrow. Donald Trump tried to put public pressure on Mike Pence by tweeting lies like, all Mike Pence has to do is send them back to the states and we win. Do it, Mike. This is a time for extreme courage. Donald Trump's last attempt to personally convince Mike Pence to commit a crime was 11.15 a.m. on January 6th. 
At 11.15 a.m., shortly before traveling to the Ellipse to speak to his supporters, the defendant called Pence and made one last attempt to induce him to act unlawfully in the upcoming session when Pence again refused and told the defendant that he intended to make a statement to Congress before the certification proceeding confirming that he lacked the authority to do what the defendant wanted. The defendant was incensed. He decided to reinsert into his campaign speech at the Ellipse remarks targeting Pence for his refusal to misuse his role in the certification, and the defendant set into motion the last plan in furtherance of his conspiracies. If Pence would not do as he asked, the defendant needed to find another way to prevent the certification of Biden as president. When the defendant took the stage at the Ellipse rally to speak to the supporters who had gathered there at his urging, he knew that Pence had refused once and for all to use the defendant's fraudulent electors' certificates. The defendant also knew that he had only one last hope to prevent Biden's certification as president, the large and angry crowd standing in front of him. So for more than an hour, the defendant delivered a speech designed to inflame his supporters and motivate them to march to the Capitol. The rest is history. And as described by Jack Smith, the crime against the United States of America like no other in our history. Last night, the United States of America learned beyond a reasonable doubt just how eager Donald Trump's next vice president would be to commit the crime Mike Pence repeatedly refused to commit. Look, when Mike Pence made that decision to certify that election, that's why Mike Pence isn't on this stage. Senator Vance, you have said you would not have certified the last presidential election and would have asked the states to submit alternative electors. That has been called unconstitutional and illegal. Would you again seek to challenge this year's election results, even if every governor certifies the results? I'll give you two minutes. Well, Nora, first of all, I think that we're focused on the future. He is still saying he didn't lose the election. I would just ask that. Did he lose the 2020 election? Tim, I'm focused on the future. That is, a damning, to... that is a damning non-answer.